In this video, I'm going to show you how to upload your imitation templates onto Cordial so you can sell them on your Etsy shop. So once you create your Cordial account, you will go to creating a new design and you want to do this uh, from scratch, digital or paper item. I'm just going to call this A7 Invitation Design, except I'm going to spell it right. <laughs> and I'll load um, what's called a preset, so Imitation A7. This has basically just chosen some of these options for me. So we have one artboard per page, five by seven, width by height, units or inches, and 300 pixels per inch. So now this is our artboard, and in info you'll see a few things about like showing bleed versus not showing the bleed, um, showing the bleed on here, and how big you want the bleed to be. So I would go ahead and set all of these things um, before you start designing, and then when you want to look at all of your designs, you will see them here. So what I would do is create kind of a template. So I've created like an A7 imitation design template. And whenever I click that, it opens a new one for me. So I don't have to go through all those settings and then I'll just save it as this new design. So I'll say new squiggle design. We're going to upload this wedding imitation template and I'm going to show you all the different options you have for editing in Cordial and how you can think about your current designs as becoming, uh, adapting them to templates. So the biggest thing here is going to be your graphic elements and there are some elements that you can use within Cordial if you go into the shape section. So if you want to do something really simple, you can always design things in there. I'm more converting some of my designs I already have into these templates. So I'm going to start with my Illustrator file here and we want to get these shapes uploaded into Cordial, but we want to do it in such a way that they can actually change the colors because that's really important to me on this suite. This won't be something you can do with like watercolor images, but it's nice to do it with graphic elements like these. So to start, we're going to need to save each individual element as an SVG file. I'm going to remove the text from this one and I'll do this one while we're at it as well. And this is artboard two and artboard five. Lastly, before I save this, I actually want my artboard to be a little bit larger because I'm going to want this to apply with bleeds. So I'm going to save it as 5.25 by 7.25. And I'm going to make this one just a tad bigger, 0.25 as well. And you'll see kind of why we do that in a second. Um, so I'll save out and we'll do it as an SVG. We'll click use artboards and we want artboard two to save as an SVG. And then we'll do the same thing with artboard five. Now in Cordial, we'll want to upload these. And these are the two that I just uploaded. You can name them and you can also tag them such that you can search them later. As you start adding a ton of different elements, this is going to get a little bit more unwieldy. We're just going to name it um, Squiggle Frame A7 and I can search that. Um, else. And then you have to certify you have the rights to upload and use these images. Uh, if you haven't watched, I have another video on image licensing from Creative Market, for instance. And typically items that you buy with a commercial license, you can't actually upload to a template system. It's you can use the element as many times as you want, print them and sell them, but you can't put them in a system where someone else is going to be able to manipulate and print them themselves. So in that case, you'll need a higher license level. These are just shapes that I created. Um, so my watercolor frames are made with public domain um, elements or elements that I created as well. So those are the only ones you'll actually have full license to use on these templates. You need to take that into consideration. Now, if you're not trying to have them change the color, like for the watercolor templates or anything, you can upload those as JPEGs or PNGs. I like PNG because it tends to keep the full size of the element. You don't have to resize it. You'll see here that when I have an SVG, it comes in smaller. That's just from Illustrator. If you save from a different program, you might not have that issue. Um, and you'll see why I uploaded it with 
the bleed, I made the artboard a little bit larger so that this artwork would extend um, past the bleed and that's this dotted line here. So this looks really good. We're gonna leave this in place and as you can see, people can actually change the color. So I could change the color here to whatever I want and my clients are gonna be able to do that. There are settings, so if you don't want them to be able to do that, they don't have to, uh, but I'm gonna leave it as orange for the starting and then we have this layer here you can turn it off and on you can delete it you can duplicate it you can move it around do a lot of things and then from there you'll want to start adding your text so let's see i'm just gonna go back to our original look so i recommend fully designing your suite before you put it in cordial so that you know exactly like what fonts and sizes you want to use uh cordial is going to have slightly different fonts than you might have um on your document and again that same licensing restriction applies so just because i have a license to use a certain font doesn't mean i have a license to put it in a template where other people can use it so i stick with the free fonts that are included on cordial they also have um, a creative fabrica license well which will get you even more fonts and then i have two fonts that i created so obviously i have the rights to use those on here as well so i went ahead and created this one in the fonts that I know are good for cordial. So you could always create all of your suites here in Illustrator just using those fonts that you know are going to be accessible on cordial. So this one's called Arape, I don't know. <laughs> and that's one of my cordial fonts. And the way to get a text box is just to double click on that font. We can enter in our text here resize our box and I think the text is a little bit large so we want it to be more like 12 points and you can adjust line spacing letter spacing bold italics underline all of those things there now I'm going to grab this text and it's in a font that actually is not a font for cordial but I'm going to use Senzel as a similar option now I'll type in my text. And here's where it kind of gets to that annoying point because you kind of have to put in everything. So even that too is its own text box, which is kind of annoying. So I like to kind of copy and paste text boxes so that I can copy and paste the font settings. Here, it kind of doesn't matter what these names are. So if you don't want to be copy and pasting at this point, you absolutely don't have to. Um, you could just type in new names here. Let's see, this is 12 point font. Let's change that to 12 point. And it would be nice if some of these text boxes were connected to each other, but that's just not how cordial works and that is okay because it actually is really helpful for your clients who are not graphic designers on the back end. I'm gonna go ahead and input all the six and I'll speed it up for you. Now, if I wanna grab all of this, I may accidentally grab the back piece. So I'm just gonna lock that layer so that I can grab all of these layers and move them down to a place that feels more centered. Now there's lots of options for what you can allow your clients to do. So if you click on here, you'll see all of the different fonts they'll be allowed to use. Um, you can see them also over here in design fonts. So if you want to, you can like select all the fonts and add it to their design. And now when they go here, they'll be able to choose from all the different fonts, but you can absolutely limit that as much as you want. You can also limit a color palette usually. Um, and if you lock a layer, then that means the clients also will find that locked. So you want to make sure you unlock it in case you want them to be able to change the colors, but sometimes we don't want them to be able to change the colors. And a lot of that stuff is over here in the info. You can do the different saving and printing options, um, different things that they can use design settings and then you can change like the max number of downloads how, if they can change the background duplicate pages add text boxes and upload their own images and then if you want them to be able to switch out images so for instance i have a design where they can 
change out the image. So in the customer images, they'll have all of these five different ones to choose from that they can add, move around, delete as needed just in case they wanna add a different flower here or something like that, or just switch that out. Um, but as you can see, my images have a lot more things in here that aren't customer images. So those will be per uh, item or per listing that you have the customer images that they'll be able to use on each design. Now, all of my designs are in here and you can see like for this suite, we have the imitation, we have the details card, the envelope liner and the RSVP card and just one, Thing I want to note here is like you'll have to think about things a little differently. So one of my favorite elements of this suite is that uh, we have this little wavy text here for let us know before April 20th. Um, we're not going to be able to do typing on a path in Cordial, so we'll have to just kind of change that and that's okay. It's not the end of the world. It's still really cute. If I wanted to upload something that was static, so I could just do like let's celebrate and I could create that as an image, upload it on here, and it would be here on every single card unless they decided to delete it or something. However, I don't wanna do that because if they change the font, then they would want to have changed the font on that as well, and it won't look the same. So I just want to give them the freedom to make a design that's going to look really good and cohesive and be exactly what they want, even though we're getting rid of that little element that I do really like about this suite. Um, that's one of the things that they can get if they pay for me to <laughs> design the suite as opposed to purchasing a template and printing it themselves. So you will have to kind of think through those things. And then I have all these suites over here with like watercolor borders. Um, so obviously they can't change those colors in the way that they could change the color on this squiggle border because it's an F SVG file. So you have to kind of think about those things when you're adapting your invitations to templates, but you can absolutely um, do things like this where they can change the actual background. So I can just change this to like a blue color or whatever I want to match my suite, or I can lock it so that the client can't actually change it. It just depends on how you want to do that and what freedoms you want to give the clients to manage and change up their suites. Once you have all of the pieces, you can attach them directly to an Etsy listing. And you do this by going in here and creating a listing. So if you want to create a new listing, let's just call it new listing you can select all of the different designs. So add your signs. And I have an instructions card that is automatically on every single listing. So we'll select our invitation, our details card, our liner, and our RSVP card. And these will all be over here. And then you can click done. And then within the listing, you can actually change where everything is because I'm going to want the invitation to be first and the RSVP card to be second because that's what most people need. And instructions are right after the invitation, which is really helpful. So then I'll have a demo link, which the client can then use to test this out before purchasing. Um, it's really cool because they can change everything. They can put in their name, they can change the colors, they can change the fonts, they can see everything that they can do on this entire suite. Um, and then there will be a buy now button at the top once you connect it to an Etsy listing so they can go through and purchase it, create an account, and it will save all the changes they made to their account so that after they purchase your template, they will be taken um, directly into a template with all of their changes already made. So that's really helpful. You're basically giving them the full product and then whenever they're ready to download it, they have to um, buy it before they can do that. So it's really, really helpful. And I always encourage my clients to just demo these before they buy them. And you'll just connect it to that Etsy listing so you can get the buy now button up here by using the Etsy listing ID. So when you go into the listing, this right here, is the listing ID and then you would just paste it right here and save and that will connect this quarter listing with the Etsy listing. Same thing in Shopify as well. And you can change the thumbnail of the listing to match one of the pieces on the listing, which is really cool. So now I have all of my listings over here and some of them are connected to Etsy listings already and some of them are not, but they are all ready to go. And you can see on here like how many orders and things like that. 
The last thing I want to show you is when you go into your orders, you can see all the different orders that were placed. Right now, I just have these sample orders, and you can actually go in and look at what they've done, see their designs, see how many downloads they have left, and help them out with different things. So if you need to add some new design to the order, if you need to help them uh, with changing something that they can't figure out how to change, if you need to print them for them, you can always do that. Hope you'll let me know what other questions you have about this. And thank you so much for watching. And I hope you'll stick around and watch some of our other wedding imitation design videos. Thanks, everyone.